The New York Mets introduced Buck Showalter as their new manager today, and boy, did he impress. On today's show, going to be breaking down my five takeaways from the introductory press conference where Buck Showalter is proving to be exactly what this Mets team needs. <laughs> You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you uh, amazing Mets fans who are listening to Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Locked On Mets is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Now on today's show, I'll be breaking down my five big takeaways from the introductory press conference of Buck Showalter. It is clear the Mets got an experienced manager who is going to check off so many boxes as they try to win now and win in a big way in 2022. So we're going to go through those five takeaways throughout the show today. Before we get to any of that, though, I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing about the Mets at JustBaseball.com, where I will probably write a piece about Buck Showalter that will go up at some point on Wednesday. But as we go through the introductory press conference, the most obvious initial takeaway that we can discuss here is the fact that Buck Showalter is great with the media. And we knew this coming in, but... You finally see it. You see him holding up the Mets jersey, wearing the Mets cap, talking to the media. And the respect that he pays to each reporter and each question it is refreshing. You don't see that often. Um, you know, there was a lot of multi part questions that Buck was slipping up on. And you could say, well, you know, why is he not able to, to remember both parts of the questions? But it's because. Buck was giving so much attention to detail for every single question and answering every single question. A lot of managers or just anyone who's in a press conference situation that gets these multi-part questions that are, for one, really hard to answer anyway, to try to, to go through and, and give a thoughtful answer to a, the first part of the question and then revert back to, to a couple minutes before and remember that second part of the question. Most people will just kind of blow by it. They'll answer the part of the question they remember and you'll move on to the next reporter where Buck is in some ways stopping the press conference and, and making things, I don't want to call it awkward because everyone's having a great time with Buck, but certainly a change of pace where I was like, wait, what was that other part of the question again? And, you know, really giving the reporters that respect to answer everything thoroughly. And, and overall, this was the most entertaining press conference, in my opinion, in some time for the Mets. I always hate these, if I'm going to be completely honest, because – it's hard to get past the cliche answers. It's hard to get past the cliche questions. Um, you know, what are the goals next year? Uh, well, what is so great about this job? Why are you so happy that you've had this opportunity? Would you like to win a World Series, Buck? And it's just, you sit there like, okay, what are we really learning from this process? So a lot of times the introductory press conferences can get a little bit dry, get a little bit boring. And with Buck, that was not the case at all. He had everyone eating out of the palm of his hand. Uh, and managing the media is a big part of running the New York Mets. This is the guy that's the face of your ball club, for better or worse. We saw it at times with Mickey Calloway and with Rojas where, you know, those questions can reflect poorly on your ball club depending on how you answer them. They can, they can certainly uh, give your club more respect or less respect depending on how the media is managed. And I think Buck Showalter is such a pro's pro that that's now something that you don't have to worry about impacting the ball club at all. That if there is a thumbs down situation where Francisco Lindor and Javi Baez start this thing, it becomes a big story. They're booing the fans. The media is making a big deal out of it. You have someone like Buck Showalter that can cut through all the noise and diffuse those situations, diffuse the rat raccoon gate, all these different things. Buck Showalter is so adept at dealing with the media because he does, you know, treat it seriously. He has also worked with the media or worked in the media a bit most recently, but that's going to give this franchise just an extra layer of respect. It's going to take the pressure off some of his guys. He's also, I'm sure, going to help some of these guys when it comes to their own handlings with the New York media. 
And that moves on to my second impression here, which is that Buck Showalter is perfect for New York. And one of the things he said, this is a quote, he says, quote, there's accountability and responsibility. It's not for everybody. We're going to find out who it's for and who it ain't as regards to playing in New York and the pressure of New York. He is clearly a, a guy that respects his previous tenure with the Yankees and being uh, someone who came up in that organization, getting those first opportunities with the New York Yankees. He talked about how George Steinbrenner really created that accountability to win at the minor league level, along with the major league level and how, when he was managing in the minor leagues, you had two jobs. It was develop your players, but also win your league. And that emphasis on winning rubbed off of him at an early time in his career and has carried over. So I think that all of those experiences he can draw on makes this job one where you can cut out the noise. You can't avoid some of the pressures that come with New York and just focus on the job at hand. Focus on what you need to do to get your team ready to play every day. And I, I really believe that when it comes to all of the different layers and the noise and the things that come with managing in New York city, the best part about this hire in that respect is you can just quiet all of that because he's got three decades of managerial experience. And you know, his first experience of any of it was coming up through New York and managing the New York Yankees. So I think that if you look at the experience he has from that working with that particular owner who had a big personality now working for Steve Cohen. There's just so many things that he learned there that I believe will pay great dividends now, especially as he left the Yankees has now had experiences with all these other ball clubs, bringing up an expansion team, you know, turning around a franchise like the Orioles, all these different, you know, spots on his career that lead him back to come full circle. Now he's back in New York on the biggest stage with the team that is built to win. You know, he has at other stops had to build up that culture, build up, you know, even just having the players and the talent on the roster to be able to succeed. Whereas now a lot of those excuses, as he said, are off the table because the roster with Steve Cohen's investment is going to be in shape. And really all you have to focus on is taking this group of guys blending them together, creating a family, creating a culture that can win and just go out and every single day, put your best foot forward to get a W and get through that grind of the season to eventually make it into the playoffs. So all of those things I think came across in this first meeting with the media. He's going to handle the media. Great. He's going to be great in New York. And there's still some other things I'm really excited to talk about here. Uh, the way he is going to adapt to the analytics his experience and what he's going to do with Billy Apple. There's so much more I want to talk about. I get to more of that all in just a minute. This holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar. That is built bar, which is filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor covered in chocolate, but amazingly low in calorie, sugar, net carbs, and fat while being high in protein. So you get the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. So many flavors to choose from, whether it's the raspberry, mint brownie, cherry, double chocolate, my personal favorite cookies and cream, or peanut butter brownie. Built Bar will give you that extra fuel you need to bust down those mall doors and battle all the holiday shoppers. Or if you're just standing in an endless shopping line, Built Bar can give you that extra something you need to keep you going. So throw one in your jacket or purse. You never know when you're going to need it. If you want to try Built Bar today, go to Built.com. Use the promo code LOCK15, and you're going to get 15% off your next order. You can get a mixed box where you can try a bunch of different flavors. I certainly recommend that because you want to try all these flavors and see which ones you like best. Again, when you go to built.com, make sure you use that promo code LOCK15 and you're going to get 15% off your next order. Now, one of the big narratives against hiring Buck Showalter throughout this process was this idea that he's an old school manager that is adverse to analytics. And I think Buck obviously heard that noise because he made a very big point of dispelling that notion throughout the press conference. He always went back to his embracing of analytics, even when sometimes the question didn't necessarily dictate that response. He kind of kept on circling back to it, but 
what he has talked about throughout this press conference is that he embraces information. This is still a guy that early on in his career was charting, you know, players in the minor leagues with his wife, you know, paper and pen and all that hard work. It's like back in the day with Davey Johnson having those computers or the 86 Mets or those teams in the 80s. You know, these managers who have been in the grind for a long time, there's always been that push to get them all the information you can have, to, to sponge it all up, as he said, to process everything and to utilize it to your advantage so that you can win. The only difference is now it, it's just gotten so much more complex and the information has gotten better, but that does not mean that he's not going to embrace that information. I'm looking for a quote right now that he said, uh, I mean, he talked about, for one in Baltimore, he would have loved an Alex department. They just didn't have the funds to have one. And getting back to what he said about eliminating excuses, he talked about how Steve Cohen continues to eliminate excuses because as you're adding to this analytics department, as you're adding to the infrastructure with technology and player development and scouting and all these different elements, that removes excuses for not winning. You know, you have this team with this big payroll that has a starting rotation that teams would be envious of and a starting lineup. And by the end of the offseason, maybe the bench makes a lot of sense. The bullpen looks really good. So now there's no excuses. And that leads to more accountability. And one of the things that Buck said is he talked about how when you are looking at another team, he says that, oh, man, I cannot find this exact quote I'm looking for. And I, I want to make sure that I quote him exactly right here. Uh, he said that basically said if, if another team has another, he, okay, <laughs> I'll paraphrase. He says that he does not want any other team to be able to beat the Mets because they have better information that they utilize information better, that he's not going to let that happen. He was very clear on that, that for him embracing the analytics and taking all that information in and utilizing it is key to success. So this notion that he can't use analytics, I think it is certainly um, overblown. And when you have someone who's clearly thrilled to have this opportunity, he spoke pretty candidly about the fact that he didn't know if he was going to get another shot. And I think that he is rejuvenated by this opportunity to not only come into a team and manage again, but this isn't just, okay, I'm going to pick up and, and manage the Oakland Athletics right now, right? Let's say Buck got that job. And you don't know where the payroll is going to be. And you got to make the most out of that roster. And maybe if everything breaks right, you'll have a playoff team that you can go into October and win with. But the Mets, you have a roster that's clearly ready to win now. He's he's rejuvenated by that. You know that during the season, if you need an addition, it's going to come. You're going to find some way to bolster the roster if you need to. So all of that plays in to this notion that he wants to win and is going to do everything he can to win, including embracing the analytics. And this is a guy who is not only a hard worker, but a great communicator. So he's going to be able to get the most out of all these departments by, you know, talking to these different people, finding out what they need to succeed and incorporating everyone together. And he did talk about, you know, that approach of top down, everyone pulling in the same direction. I think with that, the New York Mets are set up so well because now what they have with Buck Showalter and Billy Epler, which I'm going to talk about more in just a minute, is they have experienced leaders. And leadership matters in this game. And so with that experienced leadership, when you already are now building out the analytics department, that leadership can carry over into every facet. And hopefully that will lead to all of these different parts of the New York Mets working hand in hand to get the best result and to be real winners in 2022. I have a couple more takeaways left that we'll get to in just a minute. Bet online has you covered all season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. As the football season continues to march towards the playoffs, that line remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit just by using the promo code Locked On For basketball, football, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. 
Now, if you want a couple of quotes from the Buck Show Walter press conference, if you haven't watched it, and it is entertaining. So if you want to go on YouTube, uh, go to SNY. The whole press conference is there. You can watch Buck Show Walter speak with the media or even watch his interview with uh, Gary Apple, Andy Martino, and Anthony Recker after that introductory press conference. But here's a couple quotes that will give you some goosebumps if you're a Mets fan. He said, quote, there's no magic sprinkle dust. It's about winning baseball games. That might not be the most exciting, but this one is. He says, quote, I understand the job description here. It's to be the last team standing. And that's what you want to hear. There are these World Series expectations that the Mets are not shying away from. And I've talked about in recent episodes how those might not be the most realistic of expectations just because it is hard to go from a third place team that was, you know, playing terrible baseball at the end of that season, finished under 500 to suddenly win it all. But they have all the pieces in place and now they had the manager to get that done. And also I like the GM in that combination as well with Billy Epler and Buck Showalter. And if I think back to the last couple years of Mets baseball, let's just go through the combinations the Mets have had atop their organization going from after the 2015 and 2016 season, they had Alderson and Terry Collins on their last legs when it came to their respective baseball careers. And Alderson is back now, but I think we can even see, even in these press conferences, you know that he is just very close to retirement and doesn't really have it in him anymore to grind through the day-to-day the same way that a Billy Epler does. After Alderson, it was Brody Van Wagenen and Mickey Calloway as the combination. And we know what a disaster that was at times. Then you got to the Rojas era with Zach Scott, originally Brody and Zach Scott, uh, you know, or I guess Jared Porter for that short period of time before he was let go. It was nothing but circus disasters and a ton of inexperience. It really was. And I don't want to include Rojas in the circus disaster category. I still think that Rojas has a bright career ahead of him and will be a manager again one day and could be very successful. But you can't, you know, compare the experience level of Rojas, who got thrust into that job, and Showalter, who's been doing this for so long, and to just feel the competence when these guys are talking to the media, where they're polished in their answers. They know how to say what they're trying to get across. They they are very smart in the way they're answering these questions, and you just feel like there's a steady hand on the wheel with Billy Epler and Buck Showalter that you haven't felt with the Mets in some time dating back to, I guess, Alderson in his prime. But even before that, I don't even know if the Alderson era felt like this as far as that steady hand on the wheel. And that might not be Alderson's fault. I think it's also the ownership. It's having an owner that cares, that's willing to invest, that can feasibly invest, just financially speaking. And someone who is, even if Steve Cohen is more involved with the baseball operations than he lets on. And I do believe that's the case. I do think that Steve Cohen has a very big say on the direction of the New York Mets, even when it comes to player personnel and some of those things. It's not to the extent of Jeff Wolpon, who didn't have a day job, who treated the New York Mets as his own play toy that was doing everything and trying to masquerade himself as a team president when he clearly was not suitable For that job. Now you have Billy Epler in place who is given that leash to make decisions. You have Buck Showalter now as an experienced manager working with Billy Epler. And that's a really good thing. And one of the things that Buck said was he said, uh, great organizations have great connectivity between the general manager, the field staff, and the owner. And I really believe the Mets are building towards that with this group that they have put together. Again, this is a team that is trying to win now and having experienced leaders. It isn't just about having a better manager for that decision in the seventh inning where Rojas went to pitcher X and Buck Showalter might go to pitcher Y. It's not that minute of a change here. It's about how Buck Showalter as an experienced leader gets more out of a Francisco Lindor or is able to, to get a little bit more out of Jeremy Hefner, you know, empower some of the people he's working with a little bit more, knows how to lead and delegate properly after years of experience. This is a guy who's built 
so many winning cultures. And now you had have everything in place to do just that. So that is really important. And one of the things that Billy Epler said, and again, my final takeaway here is that Buck Showalter is the perfect manager to build this winning culture and to win now with. He said that Buck Showalter's ability to connect with a wide range of people and his drive to compete are among the factors that led him to being named the Mets manager. Sandy Larson called this a 10 out of 10, that this was the closest you could find to a 10 out of 10 higher. And one of the things that Buck Showalter says is he said, quote, every situation is different. You try to bring what the players need to reach their potential. It's adjusting to the needs of the team. Slow down and not knee jerk. I try to have a clear, open mind about players and lean on people. That ability to connect with this roster is going to mean so much to this team to be able to get the most out of every single guy. Uh, I just think that that's really going to be something that changes this team. And another thing that I actually found maybe the most interesting um, of the entire day uh, of coverage was when SNY was talking to Buck Showalter and his wife after the initial press conference, his wife finally answered a question and gave a fascinating answer about her role in this. You know, she's kind of, uh, I don't know if you call, I guess, the, the first lady of the Mets, that's, that's Alex, uh, Alex Cohen. But, you know, she, she's the first lady of the ball club, I guess, right? And the way that she talked about being there for the players' wives and the families is something I never even registered as being part of the job of a manager. But they were talking about how they instill that family culture. And when you are traveling, you know, there's questions that players' wives have about, you know, moving the kids and, and about, about, adjusting to the playoffs when you're in the playoffs and, and how, if you can tend to the needs of the wives and the families properly, you're going to get more out of the players because then the players don't have some of those concerns. And that's just something that you never even think about when it comes to hiring a manager. But along with the experience that Buck has, his wife has been along with him for this entire ride that they said they've been married for 38 years. She's been you know, at every step of this journey, she isn't even necessarily getting paid. I mean, it is by extension, but she's a huge asset to this team now too. So it, it really is the, the type of hire that just fits and just makes sense. I think with the Billy Epler hire, you know, I had to, to sort of adjust to it. And, and he won me over a bit with the press conference. And the more I've heard, the more I've liked with Buck Showalter, I felt like this was the right move. And that's what I sort of talked about prior to the hire as we were going through this process in the Mets interviewing people. It just seemed like it made a lot of sense. And this was complete confirmation bias for me watching this press conference. It's clear to me this is the guy for this team. Now, this team could fail. And in two years, you could start over. You know, maybe he doesn't live out the three year deal of his contract here. Maybe the Mets are terrible the next two years and you're just stuck with this franchise that can't figure it out. But for what they're trying to do right now, the goal of this offseason, it's been a clear mission since they hired Billy Epler. We are trying to win right now without hurting our future. That's what the Mets are going for. That's what they, that was the mission statement. We're going to sign players, short-term, big money deals. We're going to build a team to win right now. And we're going to protect our future as we try to get every single part of this organization up to speed with the best teams in the sport when it comes to analytics and, and player development, all those other things. You have the manager that can step in right now that there's no learning curve, that knows what the goal is. As he said, the goal is to be the last team standing, and he is going to have a steady hand on the wheel, driving the Mets, trying to get to that place. And I'm just excited to see how it all comes together, starting in spring training and leading into the season, hopefully to lock out does not interfere with any of that, but let's try not to think about that too much because lockouts make us all sad. Anyway, though, that's going to be all for today's edition of Locked On Mets. Tomorrow will be the last episode of the week. We're going to do our Festivus special, so I will air some grievances from 2021, and then we will move on next week and continue our coverage as we lead into the new year. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. At Ficklestein Ryan, follow the show at Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. 
Get daily picks, blowout specials, wrong team favorite picks, and least during this lock of the day by following Locked On Bets wherever you get podcasts.